Now, what happens if we actually change uh, the impedance in which we terminate our line? We go back to our schematic. We change this impedance to 25 ohms, for instance. And then we re-simulate. We look at the graph. We can see now that our input impedance, and hence the reflection coefficient, are in a different place in the chart. They're not in the 50 ohm spot anymore. Now let's get rid of one of the two measurements because obviously they show the same point of the Smith chart and uh, we'll take away Z in just by clicking on it and right clicking selecting delete. So we've just got the S11. What you can now do to find out what the value of S11 actually is, is to right click, go on to add marker and then click on the point on the graph, in this case just one point, which you're interested in. And you can see that it will tell you uh, which frequency you're you are, uh, simulating at. Uh, it tells you the uh, real value and the imaginary value or the impedance. But you may so wish to actually have a different value read out from the marker. To do that, go to Properties, Markers, and you can see that you can choose two main things here. The display format, so whether you want real imaginary magnitude and angle or db magnitude and angle, and the display type. Do you want to show the reflection coefficient, the impedance, or the emittance? Uh, they are all representing the same termination of the transmission line. They are only different quantities, but they are representing the same operating conditions. Now, at the moment, we have got uh, an impedance shown, and we can keep it as impedance, but for example, we can denormalize it to 50 ohms, so we can see the actual value of the impedance. Click on Apply. And OK. You can see that we've got around 50 ohms in terms of real part, but we've shifted um, in terms of imaginary part to from 0 to minus 34 ohms. You can have different readouts from the marker just by going to properties, for example, and selecting reflection coefficient and then having it in terms of magnitude and angle. This will give you an idea but what you will get. You're getting a magnitude on 0.33, so about a third, and an angle of minus 74 degrees. Now your reflection coefficient will have a magnitude of zero if there was no reflection at all, and it would have a magnitude of one if there was total reflection. Now here you're somewhere in the middle. Now what happens when you actually change the length of the transmission line this time? We saw that before, that had no effect at all. But now we have a mismatched line, and hence as we change the length of this line, we will put ourselves um, at, at a different voltage and current uh, point. Because in this case, when there is a mismatch, your physical position along the line, as you've seen with the slotted line experiment, and very much influences your voltage and current values and hence your impedance values. So if I start changing the length of my line, you can see that I'm going around in a circle with the same magnitude, because the magnitude of the refraction coefficient doesn't change once you've set your termination, but at different angles. But as I increase the length of the line, I move, and I move clockwise along the circle. Now, there is a special point along the circle which we'll be exploring. Now, you can change the range over which you are tuning your line to zero to 100, for instance. So what happens if the length of the line is zero? Where at this point, well, at the moment we've got the reflection coefficient um, value shown by the marker. So we can just go to properties and display a real and imaginary part, denormalize to 50 ohms, 
and the impedance apply. You can see that now, uh, when the line is zero length, we have 25 ohms. And that's perfectly expectable from what we see in the schematic. You have a 50 ohm that sees a 25 ohm load, and there's no transmission line in the middle. As we increase the length of the line, you can also see that the value of the impedance increases, 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 until it gets to a point on the other side of the chart. And at this point, the impedance has gone to about 100 ohms. Now, if we carry on going around this circle, the impedance will decrease again and again until, at a specific point, here, it's gone back to 25 ohms. So, we want to look at the values uh, of the length of the line, which took us to this specific point. So, let's go to zero again. Now, we've got no line, so we've just seen a 25 ohm impedance, and that's where we are. Now, if we increase the length of the line, to about 25 millimeters, we've gone to about 100 ohms, which is the maximum uh, of the impedance we can get to. Then, as we go to 50, we go back to 25 ohms. So you can see that you're going around in a circle and everything is cyclical and repeats itself. We are working at 3 gigahertz. The wavelength is approximately 10 centimeters, i.e. 100 millimeters. And we've gone around by 50 millimeters, which is exactly half the wavelength. So you can see that if you uh, go around the speed chart by half a uh, wavelength, uh, if your transmission line is half a wavelength long, you'll come back to exactly the same point where you started. So that gives you an idea of when things uh, repeat uh, identical to what they were. You need to move along the, 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 the line by half a wavelength to come back to the same point. Now, what happened when we set this value to 25? Now, in this case, we've gone around the Smith chart by a quarter wavelength. And that means that we've gone from a peak to a trough or from a trough to a peak. So if we were at the point of minimum impedance before, we've gone to a point of maximum impedance. Conversely, if I move along by another 25 millimeters by putting this to 50, I've gone from a point of maximum impedance to a point of minimum impedance. This is a very, very useful thing, very useful property of a transmission line, which is a quarter wave long. Because if I have an impedance which is relatively low, like 25 ohms, and I want to take that up to 100 ohms, for instance, all I need to do is just add a quarter wave line in between, and this will transform my impedance to a much higher value. So we just put 25 there, which is a quarter wave at 3 gigahertz, and there we are, we have 100 ohms impedance. Now, what happens if I go back to my schematic and change the impedance to 100 ohms? We'll start from a length of 0 millimeters. So we'll, we'll pretend that there's no line in there. We'll set our tuner range from 0 to 100 and we'll simulate. Let's have a look at what's happened to the graph now. When the length of the line is 0, we have 100 ohms, as it is expected from our schematic. We've got 100 ohms there, there's nothing in between, so this port will see 100 ohms. What happens now if we start increasing with the length of the transmission line. 
you can see that you start moving again clockwise around the Smith chart as we did before. However, this time we are starting from a point of higher impedance. If we move by a quarter wave, which we said at 3 gigahertz is 25 millimeters, we get to a point of low impedance. So we're doing the opposite of, uh, of what we did before. We went from a point of high impedance to a point of low impedance, which in some applications may be desirable. So again, we see the usefulness of the quarter wave transformer. Also, again, if you put the length to 50 millimeters, so you go around this mid chart by half a wavelength, you come back to the same point as you were before. As you've seen in the lectures, the point of maximum voltage and minimum current and points of minimum voltage and maximum current are separated by a quarter wave length. So what we're doing here is we're switching between a point where the voltage is maximum and the current is minimum into a point where the voltage is minimum and the current is maximum. And hence you get a different impedance point.